It's Morphin Time! Looking for cyberpunk items out of Japan? Check out Hobby Link Japan using the link in the description below to help support the channel. Hello, this is Sam here, and today we're taking a look at the Figma V and Yaiba Kusanagi from Cyberpunk 2077. And these are both based on the game, not the recent Cyberpunk Edge Runners anime that just came out on Netflix. These are hotly anticipated for me because originally these were announced kind of around the time the game came out. Then they said they were going to be a January and February release in 2022, which became a June release which became an August release. So just like the games, these kept getting postponed. But in terms of actual releases, they're here now, and I'm really excited to take a look at both of these, uh, especially because I love this bike in the game. The Yaiba Kusanagi is very Akira-inspired, and I'm really looking forward to seeing this thing in physical plastic form. Uh, v himself, looking at him here, they did do the male version of V. It's kind of just the standard box art version, which is fine. There's too many customization options in the game in order to really represent that, but he looks pretty good. There is a prototype for a Johnny Silverhand, which we'll hopefully see at some point. I do love a lot of the characters in the world of this game, even if they're game launched as a buggy mess that had a lot of problems. I did enjoy my time playing this game and I'm always looking forward to new updates and this has got all kinds of different accessories for V so it should be pretty good. Uh, I'll also compare them to the McFarlane Toys release of V uh, to see how those look and scale. And then yeah here's the Yaiba Kusanagi. Pretty cool. Uh, the Yaiba bike was actually a bit cheaper than V himself because it is just a bike. There's not really any bonus uh, components in here but you can see V does ride it. So that's why we're doing them together because I didn't see a point in splitting them up. So let's take a look at V and his bike. All right, so here is V. Now this V design, I had mentioned in the packaging was basically like box art V. I wanna kind of correct that because he's actually a little bit different than kind of the standard default. So for those that are unaware of the game that may just be watching this because hey, cool action figure. Uh, v is the player character in Cyberpunk. V is meant to be a person you can change and shape as many ways as possible. Uh, there is some limitations, of course. There's basically just two body types. There is no, you know, know different heights or body structures but there's a lot of face options and there's a lot of changes you can make uh, to adjust V's appearance to almost however you wish and so because of that you know when you're making a, a figure of V it's going to be more of that default setting so I thought okay you know this is probably based directly off of the box art uh, since the uh, more masculine V was the pick for the box art here and definitely it's that same jacket and the the same kind of default pants and shoes that you get towards the beginning of the game but in terms of like the actual face, they actually went with a different look. Uh, it's similar to the box art, but it is actually a different head entirely, which is really nice. And the reason why that's nice is because the McFarlane Toys uh, V, which we'll do a, a better comparison to later, uh, he was more uh, sort of based on the box art with the way the hair is cut. But in a way too, they're very similar as well. Uh, and again, we'll look at some more of those details in a little bit. Uh, but it's not exactly just box art V, but it is more of a kind of default appearance of the character. And that's one of the things I do like about Cyberpunk is V as a character is a character. They're not just a silent protagonist who just doesn't say anything. They have like a full personality and everything, and it's pretty cool. It's just you kind of change their appearance. Now in terms of the figure, he is uh, quite tall here, as you can see from me constantly adjusting the camera. The one There's uh, two little spots I don't like about this figure. First of all, uh, if you look at V from a distance, let's just do this like this. If you look at V from like here, he looks pretty good. Nice, detailed, you know, more realistic face. Uh, a lot of Figmas I get personally aren't the anime based ones. This one's a little different for me. But in terms of the actual face, if you were to zoom in, try to get the camera to focus on it, uh, you can start to see the dots from the digital spray. So this is not like what I would call an issue. It's just something I noticed that when you get uncomfortably close to V's face, you're going to notice like all the dots that went into the printing. Uh, it gives it a really nice textured look from a distance, but up close it does look kind of jarring. But once again, if you have this guy sitting on a shelf or even on your desk at, at a distance, he doesn't look too bad. Like I'm looking at him from here and I can't even tell that there's all those dots on his face. So it's going to be kind of a preference thing. I know some people don't like that and others do. Uh, my bigger complaint is the wrist joint color. So they did give V a darker skin tone than the box art, a much darker skin tone than the McFarlane figure where he was 
Uh, very, very Caucasian. He's got more of a darker skin tone here, which is great. I think that, that variety is really nice, uh, but the actual wrist joints aren't matching that uh, because they are using the standard wrist joint color for Figmas, so it is a little bit brighter. So it stands out a bit, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, that's pretty much my only minor complaints. Otherwise, I think this is a pretty nice looking figure of V. On the back here, uh, you can see this is the samurai jacket you get in the game itself. So it's got the samurai logo that was Johnny Silverhand's band uh, before he became a, uh, a wanted terrorist. Uh, but there is the samurai logo. Always love the kind of like the, it's the Oni sort of mask design, but it's got a cyborg look to it. The samurai logo back here. Uh, you've got uh, the, what was it? The uh, stars and stripes design here. Uh, plus these kind of ports. It's, it's very uh, cyberpunk uh, genre, not just cyberpunk the game. To have like random ports on your clothing but some really neat intricate details all along the character the only other thing is that uh there is no cyberware design into the arms so they're pretty blank arms that is kind of a default thing uh but as we will look at in a moment that's not your only arm options uh, in terms of the pants, they're pretty dull, but I do like the wrinkles in the pants. Gives it a nice uh, detailed feel. And then down here to the shoes where it is the laced shoes. Uh, the, the McFarlane figure is a different type of shoe. But laced shoes, you got kind of like a, you know, the lip of the boot there, which is kind of fun. And then it's got like a nice uh, bronze stripe along the edge. And then the bottom of the shoes are textured like the soles of shoes that you would see in real life, which I think is pretty awesome. This is more detail than I've usually seen from Figma. Uh, that being said, nothing on a t-shirt. He is just wearing a standard black t-shirt. Uh, you can kind of see his belt underneath there, which is pretty nice. Uh, nice zipper detail. This little badge here uh, on here, which is, I believe it's a samurai badge. It's hard to see. It's really tiny. Um, as you see, we completely outfocus the camera uh, trying to zoom into it. So we'll just kind of hold it there and you can kind of see that badge. And then also the interior here where you can see the, the actual like painted edges of the coat. Uh, I imagine this clips around to kind of cover the face. We never really see a, a zipped up version of this jacket as far as I know in the game. There's hundreds of costumes options though. But you can kind of see the, uh, the blue lines on the inside of the collar is also pretty nice. So overall, I think the detail work on this is really impressive, uh, which does explain why he's a little bit more than some of the other figments. He is taller and he has a lot more detail, which I definitely appreciate. Now, in terms of articulation, he's got a ball jointed neck. Uh, there is no swappable heads or faces on this guy, uh, but you can kind of see the joint there is a standard Figma joint plugged into a ball joint into the top of the head. So he actually has some pretty good movement, which is good because there is a motorcycle that released alongside him that we'll be looking at soon. So really good range there. Shoulders are in full ball joints. They have covers so that you can actually move his arms forward and it still kind of keep the design going. Uh, so you're pretty good there. You got an elbow, the elbow swivels at the elbow. Uh, it actually swivels at the top and bottom of the elbow. Wrists that move in and out, left and right, uh, rotate a bit at two joints. The torso, uh, it's got an upper torso ball joint and a lower torso ball joint. Pretty good arch forward, uh, not so much arch back because of the, the stiffness of the jacket. Hips that move out, they move forward, they slide down a bit when they move forward. Does look a little awkward. Uh, then you've got a knee that goes all the way in. It does sort of give him a weird silhouette here because his leg is really muscular and then it kind of thins out for the knee joint, but it does give you full range. So, you know, that's just how it goes. And then we've got a shoe that rotates. It moves forward and back, left and right, as well as a toe joint. And what's interesting, the left and right is they did put it on kind of the smooth surface so you get a nice smooth look no matter which direction you're pivoting it in. Now, of course, all those accessories would be useless without accessories. All this articulation would be useless without accessories, so let's take a look at those. Because first of all, we got the hands. He does have the two fists, but of course, it being Figma, He's got a bunch of extra hands on a little rack here. Here's his relaxed hands, which I think look pretty nice. Uh, and in, actually, I'm gonna try this on camera. Can he cross his arms? Uh, I know that's one of the photo mode options, but can he cross his arms with that articulation and those relaxed hands? Kinda, yeah. I mean, uh, again, you can probably tweak it better. Anytime I do a pose on camera, doesn't necessarily mean you're doing it the best. But yeah, you can kinda have him with a crossed arms pose, uh, sort of like that. Pretty, pretty good, actually. I was kinda wondering if he could do that, and he can. Neat. He does come with the motorcycle grip hands in the box. You don't have to buy the bike to get those, which is good, because that means if you want to use them with other motorcycles that may be in that same scale, you have that option there, which is nice, because I think that sometimes when figures include the hands for the motorcycle grips with the motorcycle, it doesn't give you the option to use it with another motorcycle. But here you got that without having to buy the Yaibaku Sanagi. You can use that out of the box, which is a nice bonus. Now, V does include a hand that has a trigger finger extended, and when you look like this, it looks like his gun didn't load, like in the early days of the game when there were so many glitches. Um, but let's load that gun, because here is the pistol. Now, I'm not sure the exact name of the pistol, and I 
did not feel like looking it up. There are like literally hundreds of gun options in the game. Uh, but this pistol, it's kind of a standard design. Looks really cool. It's got a long barrel to it. I think it looks nice. It's actually, I, I don't remember if that is the default like weapon you get in the game. Uh, but it's not exactly the box art weapon. But you do have that option of doing that box art pose where he's got kind of this going on. And he's looking a little, little Blade Runner-y. But, you know, that's all good. Um, but yeah, the pistol's pretty good. Uh, it fits in his hand. It doesn't look too oversized. You can have him, uh, you can have him support the pistol, whatever it's called. I'm not, I don't know gun terms. I apologize, but, uh, you can have him support the pistol like that if you want. So you got some pretty good options there. So it does come with one of the automatic weapons and a separate hand to hold the secondary handle, uh, support. This one's pretty cool. Again, it's, it's a little generic in the terms of, I can't really identify which one it is in game, but it looks good. It's got that kind of high tech futuristic feel, and you can have him with the automatic weapon. Uh, I may not display them as much with this one as compared to the pistol due to personal preferences, um, but these weapons are always kind of fun in the game, uh, especially when you add some of the modifiers like flame bullets. So now in the game, there are options beyond just handheld weapons, and those weapons can be weapons that come out of the arm. Uh, it's a piece of cyberware. Like, for example, this grenade launcher arm. And what's cool here is that they did include a couple of these. Now, the grenade launcher arm does make sense to include one. Uh, it doesn't have any swappable hand options. You do have to keep it in this uh, deployed grenade aid function. This little part here is just to make sure that hole doesn't close up in shipping, uh, but you can just pop his arm off here and pop a new arm on, and now you've got the grenade launcher. Cool design, didn't really work as well in game from what I remember. I, I had one of these on uh, V at one point and did not use it very long because throwing a grenade was much easier, uh, but it is pretty cool. I like the details. As you can see, you get kind of that the inner cyberware look to it where you've got that raised portion uh, with the fist, and you can see the actual panel uh, lines are molded in. It's kind of like how the arms here are bear but then you get kind of a cyberware arm here which is pretty cool uh, showing that he does have some kind of crazy upgrade going on it's really neat but there is one that i like a little bit better and that would be the mantis blade so the mantis blade in the game is literally just looks like this it's like it's really gnarly but it's like it's a blade that shoots out of your arm like this extends out folds up into the arm and then when it's combat time you just deploy it these things are crazy uh they're technically illegal in the game uh so it's always kind of fun when you get them uh the the really cool part in the game is that you get two of them the not neat part about the figures you only get one uh in game i have never encountered a, a chance to use a single mantis blade it always deploys as two so it's a little weird that we only get one of them here. Now, I do know one of the early trailers showed a cutscene with V wielding one Mantis Blade, which was not in the game. That's a can of worms for another channel, another video. Um, but this this whole uh, Mantis Blade setup was in a trailer, and this figure does sort of feel like maybe it was sort of designed, and the manufacturing process just took forever, uh, because in the game itself, I don't think there's a way to wield just a single Mantis Blade, but it does look really cool as an action figure, and you can kind of get some cool stuff. Now, in the game, you can leap at people with Mantis Blades, and it, wouldn't it be cool if you could do that? Maybe with an included stand? Now, how about that for some dynamic action? Yeah, I really do love Figma stands. Every Figma figure does come with one of these stands. It's got multiple points of articulation. It can be tightened with a screwdriver. This one might need some extra tightening. There's all kinds of copyright information on the bottom. But in terms of actual, like, posability, because of the light nature of Figmas, this one's a little heavier than some of the others I've gotten. Um, but in terms of just general uh, articulation vibe, I do like that you get the included stand because it allows them to do kind of this leaping pose. And, you know, it does make sense in an action figure sense to just have one because, you know, if you got blades installed in your arms, I'm pretty sure you'd want to be able to just deploy one of them sometimes. And the fact that the game only does two is actually just a sign of game design, not a in-universe explanation. So anyways, as I justified them not including a second one, I know this piece is like a lot of crazy tooling, a lot of paint work, and that's why there's only one included. But I could have done without the grenade launcher arm to do a second Mantis Blade, personally. But that's pretty much what we get. Uh, kind of, it, it is one of those situations where there's a lot in the package, and so I can't complain that there's not more. But I, yeah, I would have swapped this for that. Uh, just to have a second one would have been kind of neat. But overall, this is a really well-rounded package. But if you want to add to it further, we have the EX Ride Yaiba Kusanagi. Now, while a separate item, this is a really nice bike. And if you are just looking for the bike, much like with V having the hands, if you are just looking for a really nice bike, this is a pretty nice bike. Now, there is one detail I did want to point out. This is it in its clean form. You can see it's got like the Yaiba logos on it. Uh, there are a bunch of decals because in the game, uh, I think the Yaiba bike has a lot of these on it. I don't know for sure. 
I don't look at it as close, but uh, it just does seem like an obscene amount of stickers. And these stickers and labels, normally I'd be like, oh, those should be on it already if it does cost as much as it does. But I actually kind of like the clean look as opposed to having all of these on here. So I think I'm just going to leave these off. And I actually appreciate that option because, you know, it doesn't really need to have them on there. But in terms of just the overall looks, I kind of like the clean aesthetic more than the stickered. So we're just going to go with the clean. Now, in terms of the actual design here, uh, we can see that we've got really nice, you know, red interior frames, black tires, gold striping. The tires aren't rubber, but they're kind of a really hard plastic. They roll very nicely uh, on both sides here. Some really nice, like, logos, like, it's got the DTR, like, engine design. See, there's already a bunch of labels on here that, like, make sense as just the default, and those other labels just feel like customization items, uh, even though there's not really a custom system for the bike. But you can see you got the Yaiba logo, because that's the manufacturer. Uh, you got just nice silver details with red, another Yaiba logo, another caution. Uh, there's nothing on the bottom uh, that's too noteworthy. This cherry red just seems like an actual like car paint color, uh, which is really nice. So you got the X400 there, uh, the RX7000 Aurora tires, uh, which is, look at that, that is just such a nice, smooth uh, transition. And what's cool is that you have like kind of the harness for the tire on this side, but not on this side, which just gives it a sleek, sleek look. Uh, the actual foot pedals here, uh, one of them is positioned this way. They do move uh, just very, wait a second, I think this one's out of alignment. Because looking at this one, this one's kind of farther back here and it does position. This one doesn't move as well because there's a piston. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so there's actually a piston to keep that in place. So if you want to adjust it, you have to kind of move it out and move it back in. Um, but you got the foot pedal. Uh, there is a license plate. Is there a license plate sticker? That is a that is a question. Is there, I think there's a license plate sticker on here. Uh, I might put that on. You know, we'll, we'll kind of pick and see uh, later on after I'm done with the video. But you can kind of see the other side is just kind of a mirror of this side. It looks really cool. It's a little bit asymmetrical, but I kind of dig it. Uh, this front windshield piece does come off for whatever reason. It does make it nice. You can clean under here. Uh, that is a problem with some bikes. You can't take off parts of it and then you get dust cut up in there. Uh, the actual tire here doesn't really turn. Oh wait, it does. Never mind. I was wrong. Uh, it actually does turn left and right, so you can get some nice dynamic turning, and then the actual steering controls also turn left and right, which is pretty nice, but they're not linked, so you don't have to necessarily turn them to get the turn going, but this is really nice. Uh, this is the kickstand here, so you can do this, and it can fall over, or you can kick it down, and you do that. Now, of course, this is designed for V to ride it, and in order for V to ride it, you want to be able to get those hands on. I'm just going to put them on the bike and then come back, because it's a lot easier than trying to do it on camera. Uh, but this thing is pretty nice. It's a pretty sleek bike, even if it is, you know, there's no extra accessories or anything. It's just the bike, but for what it is, it's a nice bike. So here we have V on the Yaiba. He looks like he's perfectly comfortable. Bike size can be tricky. It definitely doesn't look too small. It doesn't look too big. You can see that his feet do line up with the uh, pedals here, or whatever they're called, the footrests. You know, everything seems to line up. Like, this was designed to go with this figure. It didn't feel like an afterthought. And they were designed together, and it definitely shows. And I like it. I like it a lot, uh, especially from this angle. Uh, if we if we tilt it like this, and then we raise our camera up like this. And hey, look, it's the third-person uh, view of the game. So it looks right to me. Uh, I don't actually have really any complaints with the bike uh, in usage with V. And honestly, the bike is pretty solid. I There's really nothing else to say. I can even kick this kickstand up and roll it along pretty good. And if you turn it, it'll roll in a turn. No complaints on the bike. But let's do some comparisons with V and some other action figures. So naturally, the first comparison we have to make with Figma V is to Figma Joker from Persona 5. Just kidding, that wasn't the most obvious. I just threw that in because he's also a uh, pistol-using uh, criminal from a video game that I also really enjoyed. Um, the dichotomy of my life. Uh, but anyways, as you can see, you know, in terms of Figma size to a more anime-styled Figma, V is quite large. She is pretty tall, all things considered, which is pretty nice, actually, considering he's supposed to be older than Joker, so that kind of works out. Here he is with another character that has an arm modification, Samus Aran from Metroid Prime in her various suit. Samus is still a bit taller than V, so it still makes her the tallest uh, Figma that I own. But yeah, in terms of video game Figmas, he kind of fits in that scale. For those looking for something with 6-inch action figures, he doesn't look too bad next to Spider-Man. Maybe a little short, but honestly, if you're trying to work V into a display of things like Hasbro figures, might not work out too bad, actually. 
It's not bad at all. Now we're going to do the most obvious comparison, McFarlane Toys V, who actually aren't too far apart in size than I thought they'd be. I thought he'd be way smaller being a Figma. They're actually kind of close in size. Uh, not close enough that you can mix and match the two lines, but kind of close indeed. Now in terms of the uh, details, as we were talking about this, and I wanted to highlight uh, you can see that, uh, let's get this gun out of the way here. You can see about the face, you've got sort of a, you know, thicker, deep, darker beard on the Figma V, uh, whereas you've got kind of a lighter, thinner beard on the McFarlane one. Uh, in terms of just the overall face structure, they are a bit different. These do look like two different customizations of the same character, though, which is kind of neat. They essentially have the same haircut. As you can see, it's kind of cut the same, uh, but also a little bit different. It's really kind of funny because those are kind of different options in the game itself. Uh, so seeing these two, you can tell that they're kind of supposed to be roughly the same base design. Uh, probably, you know, a base design that CD Projekt Red gave to toy companies. Um, but in terms of the actual, like, face, they do look like different uh, iterations of V, which is kind of cool, actually. Um, but they both they both still have the earring, except there's a single earring on this V for McFarlane and a double one for the Figma. So again... Seems like customizations off of the same design. In terms of the jacket details, uh, you can see that with the Figma and the, uh, the McFarlane, they are using the same jacket design, just different interpretations based on different toy companies. Uh, they both have the Samurai logo on the back. Uh, of course, the Figma does have the port for the stand, but that's about all that's different there. And then generally they have the same pants, and then the shoes are a bit different. This one's got more of like a Velcro strap shoe design, whereas this one's got the uh, laces design. But that's two different options in the game, so it's kind of funny how similar yet also different these two different iterations of V as an action figure are. And for our last comparison, here is the McFarlane Toys Johnny Silverhand. It, probably not mixing and matching too well. Uh, you can kind of see here that maybe you could just have him like, ah, uh, it's the spirit of Johnny behind him, and it sort of perspective scales out if you really want to try something like that. Something in that vein you probably could get away with. Now, there was a prototype for a Figma Johnny Silverhand. Hopefully now that V is out, we will see, you know, some kind of update on that Figma. But we'll see what happens. I guess it depended on how V and the Yaiba sold, but I would love to see more figures in this lineup. A lot of interesting characters in Cyberpunk that would make for good figures, and maybe we'll see more in the future. I'll always shout out uh, Figma for including these bags to put accessories in because it's so nice to just drop stuff in a bag instead of having to worry about putting it back in the box and keeping the box around all the time. Eh, I'm not too worried about the Mantis Blade. It feels pretty stiff. But yeah, being able to put the accessories in a bag, always a positive. So overall, I think these are two pretty solid releases. Figma V, pretty nice. A lot of great options, good hand accessories, good details. I mean, the face thing and the wrist color is like the only major issues I have with him. And that's not too bad considering he is a modern action figure. Those are my only complaints. That's still a pretty good figure. Also, the EX Ride Yaiba is pretty good too. Honestly, if you're looking for a cool red motorcycle that's sort of Akira inspired, there you go. That is a good option for a lot of different figure sizes. So honestly, having both of these, I'm pretty happy with my purchase. Now, of course, I am a big fan of the Cyberpunk 2077 world. I am a fan of the Night City sort of vibe and the story and the characters presented. So that does add to a factor into my decision. But honestly, I can recommend this. If you are looking for a character that's in a cyberpunky style, V's a pretty good figure for that. Now, because of the price, you probably want to have some attachment to the source material, but if you're looking for cool figures and a cool bike, you can't go wrong with this. So overall, I'm pretty happy. So that does it for the video. Thank you all for watching, and if you enjoyed it, hit the like button. Leave a comment down below. Tell me something about Cyberpunk that you may or may not know, or any questions you may have about this release in particular. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell, because there will be future videos on the channel. Cyberpunk related? Maybe. You never know. But in terms of future figures in this lineup, I will definitely review them if they do come out. Also, be sure to check out Hero Club at hero-club.com for video game news and more, and my awesome graphic designer on Twitter at DarkClaw643. And until next time, this is Sanat saying goodbye.